guys know I'm going to have fun with this article. So Uber is losing so many employees that executives had to address questions about the problem at recent all hands meetings. So have this, they have these meetings and they say, why are all the drivers leaving us? Why are all the employees leaving us? And the questions posed to the human uh, resources chief, Nikki Krishna Murphy. And she's like, Dara, I don't know what's going on. They're all just leaving us. Well, listen, instead of you guys going to spend millions of dollars on consulting companies who are trying to help you uh, figure things out, because obviously this guy can't figure things out, right? Let me, let me save you $500,000 on consulting fees. I'll tell you what the issue is. You're looking at him right there, right? And this article confirms that he is perceived as one of the main problems. The culture hasn't changed, right? Travis, they're blaming Travis on everything. Travis this, Travis this, bad culture, sexist culture, blah, blah, blah. Swoop him out. And they think that the cleanup boy, the mop, the mopping boy comes in. No, same culture, ladies and gentlemen, right? You got to get rid of the virus of the company. This guy's public image out there, and I'm talking to you, Chris, uh, um, Nikki uh, Krishna Murphy. I know you don't like to hear this, but your boss has to go, right? You have such a negative image out there. Now, employees are leaving, drivers are leaving. You, ha you have a big, big problem, right? This is like a version of the Titanic, slowly, slowing, slowly, slowly starting to go down. And what do you do, right? So, I'll tell you why those employees are leaving, right? They go to parties, programmers and that, and the people say, hey, you know, just now that all the parties are opening up and the people say, what, what are you doing? What do you work for? Oh, I'm a programmer at Uber. Really? You work for that trash company, right? You work for that company that screws over the drivers and the riders, and that's in the news every single day uh, for rapes, murders. Really? Is that the company you work for? Um, they read lawsuit after lawsuit. They hear about killing after killing. And it starts to wear down on these employees, right? They think, is this really, do I have any morals? Do I have any values? Is this the company I want to work for? Nah. And, you know, maybe they're right. Maybe I am on the Titanic. Maybe it's time for me to go. It's time for you to go. Let me just tell you and help you along, right? It's time for you to go. Or... You do some serious spring cleaning and cleanup action, right? And that starts with firing the CEO, has to go. Mark my words, he will be gone by the end of 2021, right? Because they have a massive, massive company image problem. I, I, I can tell that when they're running the article about Dara Koshashawi in the New York Times who tried to make him look cool, right? Then I already know this company has a problem, right? And they're trying to clean up the image. The image is the image. The people have seen it over and over and over and over again. They've been burnt over and over and over again. You're not going to fix it. You're not going to fix the problem by keeping Dara Koshashawi in the mix. So external, exclusive internal figures show Uber's employee turnover has climbed recently. The pandemic is spurring many workers to move jobs, but Uber execs have to address the problem. So Uber is struggling to recruit enough drivers, but the company has other workforce problems to worry about. New internal figures show full-time employees have been leaving at a concerning pace. I told you what the concerning issue is, right? So you've got to fix the main issue first, the virus, right? Then you've got to address other things like safety, right? You have to put money into safety. Nika Krishna Murphy, serious man. Right. Then you have to listen to the drivers. Right? You cannot always listen to the investors. I'm giving you so much free, valuable information. If you would just listen to me. I've been, I've been preaching this all along. Firstly, pay me. You owe me $1.2 million in referrals. I'm not going away. I'm going to cost this company $100 million in damages until they pay. Right? So that's number one. And then... And then just start fixing the issue, right? There's a couple of fixes that you can make that will immediately 
start steering this Titanic into calmer waters, away from those icebergs, right? And I mean that sincerely, Krishna Murphy, right? Your, your, your attorneys, they have such a bad reputation under Tony West. Your employees, your programmers, all the drivers know that they're being paid to screw over the drivers, right? We know that. It's out there, right? So, you know, with, with, with us, five million people fighting you a few thousand, you have no chance, right? So you have to correct the wrongs. In recent weeks, Uber executives, including human resources chief Nikki Krishna Murphy, have had to answer employee questions about the company's elevator turnover rate. A number of executives and managers have left including Haida Sabri, head of driver engineering at Uber Eats, Mads Johnson, who led Uber's business-focused products, and others at the director level and above. And, and again, you know, I mean, what, what is their stock worth, right? You started at $45. You messed up everything under Dara. You had, you had, you had Elevate. You sold it. You had some driverless thing going. You sold it, right? So you, you're back at $45, $46, $47, right? This is not the company these execs or these employees want to stay with. This is not the company these drivers want to drive for. There's a handful of drivers, yeah, and they, you know, they, they, they're making some decent money right now. But in general, I talk to them every single day, and I can tell you that 90%, more than 90% of the drivers are unhappy. I'm sure 10% are making some de decent cash. I was at the strike yesterday. I talked to tons of drivers. I heard the issues. I know what's going on, right? But you don't listen. So you carry on down that road, Krishna Murphy, you carry on down that road with the CEO and see where, where it will get you. You'll hit that iceberg and you will sink. You can still correct the wrong, right? So the trend goes beyond management. In June, Uber's overall attrition rate was 20%, according to figures shared with Insider. Within Eat specifically, the figure was slightly higher. Those rates, well above the usual level in the teens, um, people familiar with figures say they asked not to be identified as they were discussing sensitive internal data. Companies typically calculate these attrition rates by dividing the number of employees who have left over a period by overall headcount. Then analyzing it across 12 months, Uber's June attrition rate means that over the course of the next year, a fifth of its workforce will leave if recent trends continue, Uber declined to comment. They don't want to comment because they cannot comment. What are they going to comment about? They're going to, are they going to comment about a sinking Titanic? Yes, yes, yes. Um, we acknowledge our ship is sinking. No, they rather shut up. Right? But are they, are they prepared to fix the problem? No. They, you know, what they do is they stick little band-aids in all the holes of the Titanic, hoping it will stay afloat. This is a critical time for the company, which is trying to rebuild after the pandemic slowed its ride-hailing service. While Uber's food delivery operation has been strong, many analysts are not expecting the rides business to fully recover for some time. The stock is down 7% this year, while the Nasdaq Composite Index is up 15%. The worry with a high attrition rate, said Uber employees and HR specialists, is that the company could lose key talent. Not could, they already are causing leaders to spend more energy hiring replacements rather than focusing on the business. An internal email from June announcing new roles for the two HR employees said they would be hyper-focused on recruiting and attrition. Now, when it comes to recruiting, don't pull the same shit you pulled in 2019, right? When you had all these drivers um, bring you drivers and then you didn't pay them because... As long as you carry on doing that, Nikki Krishna Murphy will bury you. We'll bury you in social media. Your company will never ever survive, right? Because there's a lot, there's thousands of unpaid people and screwed over people out there. So you have an army of angry and pissed off people working against you. You got to fix that first. You got to fix. You got to pay those people that were meant to be paid. And you got to address the issues. You've got to listen to drivers when they talk about rates. When they, they, they don't want to be your little guinea pig, your little experiment, right? They're not happy with that. So Uber has um, hired more than 200 senior managers in the past six months, according to a person familiar with the matter. Current and former employ, employees differ 
on why turnover is rising so much. Some chalk it up to longtime colleagues pursuing fresh opportunities with startup funding plentiful in the pandemic, giving people new perspectives. Some said it's a good time to launch a company and across the broader economy, more and more workers are quitting. Here is the deciding line, the deciding paragraph in this great article. I pay for the Business Insider. They got amazing inside articles and I always love sharing them with you. Others said, listen, it reflects Uber's current culture. Haven't you heard me talk about culture change for two years? They need a culture change. And the leadership of CEO Dara Koshishawi, which though far less tumultuous than the Travis Kalanick days, can also be less inspiring. There it is. That's your issue right there. One Uber HR employee noted that other companies are ramping up recruiting. Indeed, Uber rivals are on hiring sprees. GoPuff recently picked a top Uber Eats executive, John Feltman, to help lead de delivery strategy. In June, Instacart hired Laura Jones, an Uber marketing executive. She was trash. She was no good anyway. To serve as its new VP of brand and marketing, Uber's management has sent conflicting messages about the issue, according to some employees in April, when the company announced its back-to-office policy, Krishna Murphy said internally that some staff might leave due to a requirement to be in the office three days a week, and she was okay with that. And a few months later, the company redrew, redrew its plans to be more flexible to those who prefer to work remotely. Some employees said they believe that was driven by higher than expected turnover. Staff have raised these issues in recent company all-hands meetings, about two weeks ago, Krishna Murphy addressed the point specifically acknowledging that attrition was higher than senior management wanted it to be. But she also said the problem wasn't specific to Uber and cited macroeconomic changes such as the pandemic. Lady, don't blame it all on the pandemic, right? You make, you, you, you're using the pandemic as an escape goat. Take responsibility for all the crap that you've done in the last 24 months, right? I can already, you see, there's a fly already coming here. It smells something. It smells something shitty over there. So it's like, what's going on there? The fly says, where is this fly? Yeah, it's Dara Koshishawi. Another executive, Uber Eats executive, Safras Meridia, was asked to specifically address why turnover was particularly high, high at Uber Eats during the same all-hands meeting. His response was that while he'd regret losing team members, the next day he and others would move on. There we go. So, say no more, right? I don't have to say more than that. I wish you a great day. And uh, please be safe out there. Like and subscribe, share the video, and keep on taking the fight to social media. Share this video. The people at Uber need to hear and understand, right? And you know, if you are an employee, you have some morals and values. Move on. Move on. It's time to move on, right? Because do you want to work for a company uh, that has blood on its hands? Do you want to work for a boss, a CEO that does nothing about safety? For the people that bring in the money that pay your checks. We pay your checks, dear programmer, dear employee, dear executive. We pay them, the drivers. And you kick us to the side. You kick us to the curb, right? And... Are you doing anything about our safety? So as long as you hear those stories every single day in the media, right? You've got to ask yourself, why does your boss allow pedophiles, rapists, murderers, jailbirds on the platform? Because he's a math guy. He's desperate for every single dollar, right? Now, that bad negative image of the company, it wears off on you. You're, you're the employee working for this company, right? And you have to answer the questions at parties to your friends, to your family. To Really? I heard this and this about Uber today in the news. Do you think that was good news? No, it wasn't. I heard this and this. I heard they're in another lawsuit and another lawsuit. I heard this driver got stabbed a hundred times in South Carolina. I heard that the carjackings are through the roof. Honestly, you, you, do you want to work for such a company? Do you have any morals and values? I would jump ship immediately, dear employee.
Forget about those attorneys. They already have such a trash reputation. They could knock at any law firm. Law firms wouldn't want them, right? Because they know what they have been doing the last few years, and that's just screwing over millions and millions of families by skirting the laws. That's not really who a law firm will hire. But you, the employee, you have a chance to leave. You have a chance to, you know, get some of your dignity back and go out there and find another job, right? Your company has truly messed a lot of people over. And if you're okay with that, and if you have no morals and values, keep on working for Uber as an employee.